If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner. Welcome to the ninth season of Ask the Doctor. This series was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. There are two ways to get through. First, by calling in, and second, by visiting our website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. I'll take those questions for future discussions, or you might see me answer them on my video blog, so keep tuning in. Also, there's a new feature on the website. It's a forum where you're invited to voice your thoughts and opinions on different health topics. I use this medium to talk about issues we don't have time to cover on the show. For this episode, I have Dr. Margarita Cosina, geriatric medicine attending at New York Methodist Hospital. Next to her, I have Dr. Bruce Garner, Chief of Rheumatology at Lutheran Medical Center. And then we have Dr. Merad Hediatna, a pain management specialist at Brooklyn VA Hospital. Welcome to all of you. It's great to have you here. And it's been a busy week again, and we're going to get to the news. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about that forum. You know, there's a lot of topics we don't get to discuss on this show, some related to medicine and some related to politics of medicine. And we have health care issues, new policies that are going to be put into effect. And I thought it would be nice to have that forum for people to voice what they thought of, of the president's plan, of the Congress's plan, or anything they might want to talk about. We already got one from a Mrs. Barbara Stevens who sent in a three-page um, review of, of the health care proposals and what she felt. And I thought we could use that as a start off. We'll put that on the uh, forum, and let's discuss it and see what people think, what misconceptions there are, fact versus fiction. And of course, we can talk about any medical issues that you want. There's a lot of concern with the swine flu. And let's get right to in the news, because the number one story continues to be the swine flu. And we've had some good news this week on the vaccine situation. Uh, we thought that it was going to take two doses of the vaccine to immunize people. It turns out one will probably be enough. And also, we thought we weren't going to get it to the end of October, by October 1st, we should start giving people the injections. And who are the people that should get the injections first? Well, it's children under five, pregnant women, obese people, or people who have underlying medical problems like diabetes, heart disease, if you're immunocompromised. And I know we saw all too real how devastating this disease can be with the tragedy of the Cornell student who died this past weekend. And I've gotten so, much, so many questions from parents, should they be worried? <coughs> and obviously, you're always worried about your child. But the likelihood of dying from the swine flu is very, very low. Probably you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning. But there are things we can do to protect ourselves that you should be telling your kids when they go off to school, and particularly to carry Purell. Because this virus gets uh, uh, spread more by touching than it does by coughing droplets out. And the average person touches his or her eyes and face every four minutes. So you, and this, the, fact, the virus lives on surfaces. So your child might go to a computer keyboard and touch it, get the virus that's been there for 24 hours, puts it on his eyes, and it gets into his body and gives him the flu. But by washing the hand, it definitely cuts down. There was a big story in the New York Times today, actually, that, that showed the benefit of simple hand washing. So send a Purell and make sure that they use it. They should not share personal items, such as pens and pencils. Avoid sharing drinks, and, and alcohol does not prevent it from being spread. So they should use their own cups and not with others. High fives and handshakes should be at the elbow bump. Um, Dr. Cassino, let me do, do the elbow bump with you. I don't know. Here, let me do it one more time for those who didn't see that. Now, in France, you do two elbow bumps, but here you do one elbow bump. And it, so you don't shake hands and try and make that a cool thing to do, the elbow bump, because you're really going to save your child from getting sick. Get the flu vaccine as soon as it comes out. Again, this virus is affecting people 49 and under. And the majority are 24 to 5 years old, the, the great majority who are getting sick and very sick. Um, what do you do, you know, when do you call your doctor? When can you treat it at home? Well, if you have diabetes, asthma, cancer, kidney problems, if you're under 5 or over 65, or if you had a flu that, improved, that you had, it was very bad, and then it got better, and now it's getting worse again, that's an indication to call your doctor, and your doctor may put you on Tamiflu, which is an antiviral drug, which 
definitely shortens the course of the disease and can sometimes prevent it from happening. 80% of the people who have died so far haven't had a chance to get the Tamiflu. So you want to be very vigilant. You want to look for these signs. If your child has had fever 101 degrees for three days, you, you make sure that you call your doctor and, because that's lasting too long. So that's something that um, other signs, I just want you to be aware of dizziness, vomiting, chest pain. That's another thing because it destroys the lungs in certain people. So if you start getting chest pain or shortness of breath and you've had the high fevers, call your doctor as soon as possible. Again, not to worry, you know, it's not something you want to uh, unnecessary panic or worry about. It can be serious, but in most cases it's actually less serious than the regular flu. The vaccine is on its way. You definitely want to get that. And if you follow those simple things about hand washing and sh not shaking hands, I think your child at school is going to have a better chance of not getting it. Because one other story that I thought was interesting, uh, depression causes failure of treatment sometimes in cancer patients. And it's interesting because you go, if you get cancer, you go to your oncologist who gives you a chemotherapy, you go to your radiation therapist, he bombards you with radiation. Nobody's paying attention to the mind. Are you depressed? And many people, I'm sure, are going to be depressed just from the fact they have cancer. And how much that depression is can often, if it's very severe, it can often hinder the therapy. So you want to treat the patient. You don't want to just treat the cancer. That's one part, but you've got to treat the mind of the patient. So I thought that was interesting. And we'll leave it at that for this week. Um, actually, there's one more, because I have Dr. Katsina here in geriatrics. An interesting study showed that if people worked out, if they exercised, even if they're in their 80s, they could add up to two to three years to their life. So it's never too old to exercise. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the show and, and see what we think of that. But I thought, I thought it was interesting that is no, you're not too old to start. All right. Now, you know, we have this weekly feature. I know Dr. Hadiatna has not been here before. Your wife has been here, Dr. Javari. But um, we have a quiz to try and keep people's minds active because you may be able to forestall Alzheimer's if you keep your mind healthy and do exercise, right? <laughs> so the quiz, and, and, and there's a great prize, great prize for this quiz. It's a, a plaque. It's handwritten, handmade plaque in Japan. Came all the way from Japan, this plaque. And uh, we've given out eight of them already, and they're hanging in very prominent places. So here's the quiz. The first person to get the answer gets one of these plaques. Okay. Out of all the states in the United States, out of all the states, only one state has never gone above 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So it's never been that hot in only one state. We are 50 states, so you can guess one out of 50 chance, but you might want to think about that at home. So which state has it never been above 100 degrees? Interesting question, I thought. Sent in by a quiz master, doctor, uh, not doctor, but um, Ms. Lapatosa, who's taken over for Eugene Haguero while he's away this year. All right, so now let's get down to business. We have Dr. Marguerite Cosina, no stranger to the show. How many times have you been on? Uh, Four or five. Four or five times, and always great to, you know, we always have these questions because a lot of our audience tends to be older and they, they wanted questions answered. Right. What do you think about that exercise study? Um, I think it's a great study, and uh, so it again, it confirms the um, statement that we all, particularly geriat geriatricians, that we're all uh, aware of, that you're never too old to be healthy, to eat right, and to exercise. And uh, absolutely, uh, under no circumstances, should, uh, should you attribute being weak or sick to the age alone. So in that regard, I just want to make a couple of comments in addition to you know, exercising, eating right, and uh, just pay attention to the screening. It's something that you have to discuss with your doctor. Screening? Like for yeah, what? Screening. Some, um, uh, the screening is you do the mammogram, women above 40, they do the annual mammograms which are done to uh, detect cancer. And of course, if cancer is detected in an early stage, many cancers are curable. So for instance, the breast cancer is if detected early enough, uh, is a curable disease. The same applies to the colon cancer. So the current recommendations <coughs> are to get the screening colonoscopy at the age of 50. And depending on the results, uh, the recommendations may change. But at least if the colon cancer is detected early enough, maybe on a stage that the cancer itself is not even formed yet. It's just the cells beginning to change. So at that stage, the colon cancer is curable. So that uh, for women is a pap smear, of course. And uh, the relatively new recommendations 
is uh, to get the screening for the uh, aortic aneurysm, which is a dilatation of the abdominal aorta, which is one of the greatest vessels in the body. And um, the recommendations are applies only to men who are between 65 and 75 who ever smoked at least once in their, in their life. So we're going to get so back to this, but there's some good advice and things that are there. I hope you're going to follow. We have Dr. Bruce Garner, who's also no stranger to the show. How many good times? Good to be back. Uh, f five or six. Last I think time I've actually been on was five or six. <laughs> five or six. But um, what's new in, in, uh, in arthritis? What over, anything new or long? A lot of interesting things going on. I think the big thing, which is very interesting, which came about over the past year, is that people who have a condition known as gout, and we usually think of gout as a swollen, hot, painful, big toe, although it can affect any joint in the body, we've learned that the cause of gout, which is a high uric acid level in the body, or hyperuricemia, we've learned that hyperuricemia by itself may in fact be a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So even if you don't have gout, but you have a high uric acid level, we may consider treating that in the future, which is something very new in rheumatology. So that's, that's quite interesting. I get so many questions. I know you're going to get a lot of calls because yeah. we had last week people calling in and they have questions about gout and arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus, all Your this stuff. Your audience always has yeah. the most intelligent callers, so I look forward to it. And um, Dr. Hadiatnia, whose wife was on the show, Dr. Javeri, yeah. who does pain management. And I mean, on the service, it sounds like you treat people that have pain. Right? I mean, that is, what do you do exactly? Like, who would be coming to see you? Yeah, the pain management we usually divide it to acute, chronic, and cancer. Therefore, acute pain management is mostly, you know, patients are going for surgery, you know, they have post-operative pain, uh, they're concerned about their uh, perioperative pain management, they know how, you know, they're going to get pain relief after surgeries. Then we have chronic pain, you know, patient with osteoarthritis, you know, low back pain, sciatica, neck pain, uh, you no know, disc disease that you know that these are the chronic pain patients who been suffering from pain usually more than three months. That's when we get our referral. And then we have of course uh, patients which are suffering from cancer and they have uh, you no know, cancer pain and uh, they reach to a limit that the usual medication is not covering their pain. Therefore, uh, you no, know, they require some of our. Uh, no help. Thanks. So I know we have a lot of visitors, uh, listeners out there who do have pain, whether from arthritis pain, back pain, cancer pain, or just pain with no origin. So we're going to get into that. Great to have you. Thanks a lot. We've got to go to a break, pay our bills here. We need our sponsors. <laughs> so we're going to take a short break now. And our phone number, though, I want you, you got, those of you who know it, I see it's already lit up, 718-499-6101. And you can talk about geriatric medicine, rheumatology, and pain management. So we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go right to the phones. Again, the phone number is 718-499-6101. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor. Our topics tonight are geriatric medicine, rheumatology, pain management. The number to call is 718-499-6101. Before we start, I see Monsignor Bennett out there. Monsignor, nine years we've been here. Monsignor's been there every week, Tuesday night nine at 8 o'clock. Not 9 o'clock, he comes later, but some nine. Thank you, Monsignor. We'll go into the River Cafe soon for our brunch. And I just want to mention, loyal viewers come up to me all the time. I said I would mention their names. That Mrs. Stern in Pomegranate, interesting store on, uh, on Coney Island Avenue. And then she didn't want to give a name, but in front of 65 Court Street, a great Ask the Doctor viewer. So anyway, we appreciate that. And of course, Richard Goldberg, who's got the flu, I understand, who should be getting better soon. Let's go right to our calls. We got, who's going to be the first caller of the day? Is it going to be Maddie? Is it going to be Joel? Hello? Hi, Dr. Garner. It's Joel. Joel, you beat, you beat out Maddie tonight. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. What's that? It's a big honor. I know, but she said she, last week she was having tingling in her fingers, so it may have been an unfair victory. Uh, I, you know, uh, I'm so glad to have you back. My summer wasn't complete without you. Oh, thank you. Did you watch the reruns? I did. I was watching, but, you know, I, I need live. I need live, you know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And what can we do for you today? We have a great panel. Great panel. I have a question for Dr. Garner, actually. Um, you know, I have a cousin. Um, she's uh, maybe in her 40s, and she had really dry eyes over the summer. And she went to her doctor recently, and they said she may have something called Sjogren's 
recent Sjogren's disease. And, you know, I was a little worried. She's really worried if that has any other implications. You know, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Joel. And I just want to say, though, I just want to air before I go into that, I get stopped in my office all the time from loyal viewers of Ask the Doctor. And they also read every week. They tell me they push over each other, or it's not polite to do in church, to get my brother's articles in the tablet every week. So the, the viewership here is quite loyal. And Joel, you're one of the most loyal viewers. So it's a good question you ask about Sjogren's syndrome. Sjogren's syndrome is actually very common. We see it in every one out of 100 to 200 women. We see it usually as women get older, although it can occur at any age. And basically, in its simplest form, it's dry eyes or dry mouth. And in that case, usually we don't even bother to see, the patients don't rather bother to come to a doctor because they go to the drugstore, they get eye drops to put in, they get skin emollients if it's bothering the skin, they drink plenty of fluids. You know, not everyone who's going around with that water bottle is doing it for show. Quite often it's women who have dry mouths because of Sjogren's syndrome. And in its simplest form, that's all it is. And I would urge your cousin to realize it's not that serious in its simplest form. Can there be more severe forms? Unfortunately, yes, but they're quite treatable. In the more severe forms, all of the organs in the body which deal with moisture can become quite dry. And this can cause sexual problems. And you, you want to see an uh, OBGYN physician to help with that. It can also cause severe eye problems, and there are prescription eye drops which can be given out. It can also be associated with thyroid disease in a worst-case scenario, and I'm just giving you the worst-case scenario because you asked, and I don't want your cousin to worry. You can see it occasionally, very, very rarely associated with lymphoma. That's extremely rare. It can be associated with thyroid disease, and the best thing to do for your cousin is just to go to her doctor. I, I know... The good geriatrician next to me mentioned screening. If your cousin goes to her doctor, her general internist, once a year and gets a good screening exam, he asks her the right questions. How are you feeling? Do you have any arthritis? She um, should be doing amazing, fine. Amazing answer because um, I, it's not that common. I mean, we have, I, I don't know, have you seen Sjogren's syndrome much? Not frequently. Not much, Maybe so. a few times. Have you seen much of that? Uh, very rarely. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, we're glad to help you out, Joel, with that. We're going to move on and okay, thank you. look forward to hearing from you next week. Of course, the question, now we've been getting some answers. We heard Washington State is an answer. Remember, which state in the United States has it never gone above 100 degrees? Dr. Hediania mentioned quietly Alaska, and I'm not going to say anything because we're not helping, but we want to see who's that first caller. So let's go to Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Yes. Ralph, where are you calling us from? Rockaway. Oh, wow. We're reaching all the way out to Rockaway tonight. How is yes. it out there? Very, very good. One, wonderful. Very good. And what can we do for you tonight? Uh, well, uh, I uh, had a TIA about uh, two years ago, and I was put on Ateno uh, 25 milligrams, and that, that wasn't reducing my blood pressure. So then the doctor uh, said to take it, in, to double it, and take it in the morning and at night. And I found that I was occasionally gasping for breath. So she said that was like a side effect for some blood pressure medications. So then she put me on nephetidine. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Nephetidine. Mm -hmm, nephetidine. Right. Uh, for 30 uh, uh, milligrams. And I still occasionally uh, uh, gasp. And I was wondering, you know, why, why that is. We're going to ask, we're going to get to that. Do you ever go out to Kennedy's out there? Yes, yes. It's nice out there, huh, that place? Yes, I, uh, we've been there several times. Very it's nice. beautiful they have, view. They have a place in Brooklyn, Buckley's, I think, too. Uh -huh. well, anyway, that's... let's get to your answer here. Dr. Mm -hmm. Kutsina had a mm -hmm. TIA. First tell people what that is, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an excellent question. So let's say what TIA is. It's something that uh, uh, is called uh, mini-stroke. So if, some, if a patient develops sign of a stroke, but that disappears within 24 hours. The significance of the mini-stroke is that it can be the warning sign of uh, something really big, much more significant, is about to happen. And this is a good time to initiate um, risk factors control, such as uh, high blood pressure, uh, cholesterol level, stop smoking and somebody does smoke. So apparently with the medication that you mentioned, 
your doctor has been trying to control your blood pressure. And uh, the, he tried two different medications that are of a different class. Uh, and you reported that you, that you had a feeling that you were gasping for air. Uh, was it at night or during the day? Ralph? Ralph? Yes, I didn't hear that. Yeah, Ralph. was it, did you have the gasping, did you feel the gasping for air at night? Yeah, I, 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 it happens any time. I could be watching television and nothing mm -hmm. happened and all of a sudden I'm gasping. Mm -hmm. You know, just, it's just a, a quick gasp, nothing, you know, that I'm struggling for air. But mm -hmm. it's, uh, all of a sudden I'm, I have to take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be, this is a symptom that is very vague and it can be significant to, for instance, it may be the sign of uh, some, the problem with the heart. So it definitely the part of the uh, workup for the mini stroke is it to get an echocardiogram. I, I had all of mm -hmm. that. And how was your echocardiogram? I, I, everything came out good. I had the halter mm -hmm. and, and uh, sonogram, the whole works, and I came out okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's probably the sign it's some kind of, it may not be even related to the medication. Right. And it's something that can be just, you know, you can just take a deep breath occasionally. Right. And we all do that. Yeah. Uh, if your blood pressure is not well controlled, you know, your doctor, you, you can speak to your doctor. Yeah. The doctor may try the different class of the, the medication. The, the blood pressure is under control now. Mm -hmm. It's just the occasional gasping. Ralph, right. are you working out? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, of course, the exercise and the diet is very important. Right. But just, you know, discuss with your doctor. Maybe the doctor will want to change it to the different class of the medication and check if something is, uh, if it changes. Right. Uh, Dr. Garner? Yes, Ralph? I, I gave an answer to the uh, a screen caller uh, regarding the quiz. Yes. And... Uh, uh, can I change it, or is it too late? Uh, no, no, no. What you got? We got. We. What was the answer you gave to the screener? Alaska. Oh, and that's what Dr. Hetty Apney thought. It was Alaska too. You're in good company, but call. Um, we're going to keep moving on because um, we we want to give a chance to all those people out there who are calling in. Okay. Ralph, I hope you feel better. Thank you. Take care. We got men's night tonight. We got Bruno now. Hi, Bruno. Doctor, how are you? Bruno, hi, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. What's that place out there with the opera? They sing the opera, that restaurant on 86th Street? Uh, is that Mambo Italiano, I think? No, no, no. Um, oh, the, the guy, it's on the corner of like 14th. Uh, Tommaso? Yeah. Tommaso. Oh, Tommaso's, yes, Tomas of course. You never heard the opera in there? No, I've never heard the opera in no, there. No, the opera I've actually. Many times. Yeah, yeah, but they, the guy sings in there occasionally. Ask him next time you go in there. So what can we do for you, Bruno? Well, I want to first uh, wish Dr. Garner and his lovely wife, Bruce Garner, a happy wedding anniversary. I know it was their wedding anniversary this past weekend. That's right. Thank you. Okay. And I have to tell you, I know my brother always asks people about restaurants. We ate at a fantastic new restaurant, Show Sean Hergott on Broad Street in Manhattan. It just opened up in June. Wonderful fine dining. It makes you feel like... Um, who, uh, the Kennedys going in, and not, not the one who just passed away, of course, but John Kennedy and uh, Jackie Kennedy. But thank you very much for the kind wishes. Thank you. Yeah, we, we always speak about a good restaurant when we get together every quarter when oh. I bring my mother in to see you. That's, That's true. Great. Yes, so, Bruno, what can we do? What, well, I wanted to talk, uh, talk about uh, the treatment that, my, that Dr. Gunner does for my mother, okay. uh, who suffers from osteoarthritis. And one of the more interesting uh, remedies is that she, he has her drinking quinine water. Mm -hmm. uh, which really helps her. So I wanted to see if he can en enlighten us on how that assists her. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. pain. Absolutely. And first of all, I want to tell Bruno, should I tell that you actually met Dr. Garner, the host? Yes, it, you, at Saks Fifth Avenue. At Saks oh. Fifth Avenue. You both have excellent taste in clothing. If you want to meet me, go to TJ Maxx. <laughs> um, but I, I have to tell you that your mother, who's a lovely woman, and Bruno is one of the sweetest, nicest men around, his mother sometimes gets leg cramps at night, and one of the old remedies, which we know for leg cramps, was quinine tablets. Unfortunately, they were taken off the market as a treatment for nighttime leg cramps. However, if you drink quinine, and this is a very little interesting story, why do we drink gin and tonic? Well, you in general. It, gin and tonic became a popular drink because quinine was used when the English had colonized India as malaria prophylaxis, treatment and prevention of malaria. And they had to find a way to make it more palatable, and they thought it was more palatable with the gin. Your mother, 
I don't want to see her have too much gin because I don't want the blood sugar to go up. <laughs> but the quinine seems to work, and they're not really sure why. If you drink about eight ounces every night before you go to sleep, it seems to help and decrease leg cramps. So excellent question. Bruno, thanks a lot. We're going to move and, on and to the I, next one. I say Maine is the state where it never reached 100 degrees. Oh, Maine, Maine. Did you say Maine? Yes, the state of no, Maine. No, I'm sorry, no, no. <laughs> okay, but that's a good guess, good guess. Keep Thank listening you. for the answer. Take care. This, the suspense is mounting. Remember, what state has it never been above 100 degrees? Herbert. Yes. Hi, it's all men tonight, Herbert. What? what are you t we're all men tonight calling in, I hear. Oh, I don't know. Where are you calling from? Who is this? This is Dr. Garner. Who are you calling for? Is this Stephen Garner? Yes. How could you talk to me? Who is that? Herb. Uh, I want to speak to Bruce. I'm uh, here. Who? Do we owe you money, Herb? <laughs> no, I don't know what's going on. So. Okay. No, what's the question? My Herb question has been having is, a gym with the quinine water, I suspect. <laughs> what's yeah, the, with the quinine water. Okay. I have neuropathy, pins and needles on my feet. I would like to know what can I do to alleviate that problem. Herb, now I want to, want to turn this to Dr. Hediania, who probably deals with patients who have different types of pains down their legs and so on. What do you do for patients like this? Is this Herbert? Herbert. Okay. Herbert, do you have like diabetes or? Yes. Okay. And uh, you were diagnosed with diabetes how many years ago? Uh, recently, a few months ago. And may I ask how old are you? Uh, 73. Okay. Uh, and you have been checking your blood sugar before? Or? Yes. Okay. And this was never high, correct? You're right. Okay. And uh, may I ask, do you drink alcohol or anything no, like that? No, no drinking of alcohol. No. Okay. Therefore, diabetes, you know, will cause neuropathy. You no, know, that's exactly what you're saying. You're going to have some pins and little sensations, some tingling sensation. It usually works like a socks. You know, it starts from the toes and starts gradually coming up. And uh, it's annoying, it's bothering, it uh, certainly interferes with the daily activities. It could affect your gait. No, it doesn't bother me by day. Only at night when I have to go to sleep. Okay. And there are certain medications for it, you know, uh -huh. that uh, it has... Are you on any medication for it? Uh, for, yeah, metformin, and I'm on uh, those kind of drugs, you know. Okay. But you're not taking anything specific for the pins and needles no. that you are... No, okay. no. Okay. Uh, therefore, now, there are certain medications, you know, that usually are anticonvulsive, you know, they are for the seizure medications that are being used for uh, these uh, pins and needles sensations. We usually start them with a, you know, with a tricyclic antidepressant such as Elavil or amitriptyline, or then we give them some Neurontin, uh, which is again, uh, you know, helps uh, to calm down the nerves. Right. And uh, it not only improves your sleep, but also you know, improves the pain. There are certain newer medications such as Lyrica, uh, which has come, and you know, one of the indications is for diabetes neuropathy. Cymbalta, that's another medication that's being prescribed for this condition. Uh, therefore, there are medications for what you ha have, and I would just suggest that, you know, to go to your primary medical doctor, you know, tell him that you have this, and uh, these are not new medications. This medication have been in market for a long time, and I'm sure that your primary medical doctor could help you uh, to, you know, get better and improve your condition. Very good. Yeah. Very good. And Dr. Cassina, do you see a lot of your patients with this pins and needle pain at night? Right. It's uh, also, in addition, this is an excellent answer. But uh, also, I have to know, it's been noted that um, the neuropathy improves very much once your diabetes control is improved. Mm -hmm. And many patients actually agree, and they report decreasing in pain and uh, tingling when the, uh, when the sugar gets better. Thank so, you. That's good. Good. Well, glad, good, to, Herb, good glad to have you on board. Hope to call back soon. Uh, okay. Dr. Gott? Okay. Got to list that number. Okay. Margie. <laughs> Margie? Hi. How are you? Fine. You? Where, where are you calling from? Bed Stuy. Bed Stuy. You ever watch My Little Margie? Uh, no. There was a great TV yeah. show. It was a very good show. Um, try and get some of those. You, maybe in the library you'll have it. You might enjoy that. Okay. Okay. And what could, what's out in Bed Stuy? We're, we're constantly trying to get good restaurants. Do you think there's a market for a good restaurant out there? Uh, down downtown Brooklyn, Juniors. Juniors. Ah. I saw Mike Woods down there from Channel 5 to this morning talking about the cheesecake. Really? Yeah, good place, right? Yes, very good. So what can we do for you tonight? Um, I have 
like pimples on the back of my tongue. Okay, pimples it's, on the back of your tongue. Yes, red, it's like bl bloodshot. Okay, and does it hurt? No, it don't hurt. And I went to the dentist, and the dentist said it's nothing to worry about. Okay, it's not, it's not hurting you. It's, how long has it been there? Uh, like two weeks. Two weeks. Are you taking any medications? Yes. What are you taking? I'm taking Metaprolo, Metformin, um, Fariva, and mm -hmm. Prednisone. Oh, and prednisone. So mm -hmm. let's throw it out there. Anybody want to start off and we can it go is, around? Uh, um, so it's how many, um, is it, uh, how does it, wh uh, what does it look like? It's like red pimples. Red, red pimples? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many? Is it multiple or one or two? Um, it's like three. Mm -hmm, okay. It's, uh, there are a lot of different reasons. So you know, first of all, you have to, regardless of what that is, and, uh, you have to uh, monitor it. So generally, that something in your mouth that does not heal within a few weeks require more uh, thorough evaluation. It could be you should start from your primary care doctor, <coughs> and then dep depending on, uh, on, on what the findings are, the doctor will be able to refer you to certain to some specialist. Now, the uh, potential causes of the of those um, uh, pimples that you call them that you have. Is like uh, blood, one of it's it. like blood clots. Right, mm -hmm. but what? You, you, the blood, you, the, you know, the blood, blood yeah. you know, it's uh, right. So it could be, uh, you know, the steroids, the prednisone that you're taking. Mm -hmm. uh, certain type of the vitamin deficiencies, for instance, vitamin B12 deficiency can be associated with, the, with some source in the tongue. However, it's definitely you should, the main message that I want to give you is that you'll have to, if it doesn't go away, give it another week. If it doesn't go away in a week, you should definitely uh, see your primary care doctor because it may be the sign. It may be really nothing, but it may be the sign of something. Margie, how, how old are you? 65. 65, okay. Mm -hmm. any, any, just briefly, any, any, I think that answers it. So get in to see the doctor. Make sure it's not something serious, and, um, and then you know, you'll feel better about it. Okay. Okay. Right, Thank you. Have a good week. Okay. Hi, Robert. Hello. Robert, how are you? All right, Dr. Good. This is Dr. Gunner. Yes, hi. Where are you calling from? Oh, hi, Dr. Gunner. I'm in Staten Island, New York. Oh, Staten Island. Where, where do you like to eat out in yeah. Staten Island? I eat Ch Chitoria Romana on Highland Boulevard. And Very Bioso. nice. What about Bioso Ita on New Door Plain. What, okay, and how about Italianissimo? Oh, yes, I, I've eaten there. That's, uh, Not happy with it? Oh, yeah. I like it. It's nice. The guy gives you special attention in there. Yes, yes. Okay, so what can we do for you tonight? How are you, Dr. Garner? I'm feeling well, thank you. Oh, let me, let me say to the people out there that your wife and yourself are two of the finest people that I've ever met in my life. Wow, thank and, you. Yes, I've worked in your house years ago. You remember who I am? You, you can never figure out how I got the wires underneath your rug in your house. <laughs> wow. Remember so, who I am now? Yeah, my lights keep going off. What is that, Robert? No, I'm, I'm joking. No, thank <laughs> you. Thank you, no. That's I remember who I am. I know you're great. I know. I know yeah. exactly who you are. My, my wife and myself were in your home. I, I know it very we, well. We met, we met both of you, you your wife. And, oh, and it's really nice of you to call. Thank you. Oh, yes. I love your show when I saw you on TV. And I watch it religiously, oh. and there's no better person that could have gotten a show like this. Oh, thank I've you. I've always respect your opinion on medical, and, uh, you know, you really know your stuff. You, you're one of the best in the field. Thank you. How are you doing? Okay. Can we, are you feeling well? I've had a stroke. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. I had a stroke about four years ago. Were you, did you have high blood pressure? I did, yes. I had high blood pressure. I didn't know it. Mm. You didn't, that's the problem. Most people with high blood pressure, many don't know it. Many. I know. And how I was that? working, and I came home one day to take a day off, and I'm, I was playing my drums. I'm a drummer, mm -hmm. and, and I was sitting on the drum stool, and my whole left side went paralyzed, oh. and I fell off the stool. I didn't know what happened. Luckily, my wife got me to the hospital on time, and they had to do a, it was up in the brain, hemorrhagic stroke. Oh. I blew a vessel in the brain on my right side. Oh. My whole left side was paralyzed. Did you do rehabilitation? Yes, I'm walking now, thank God. Very good. And I want to know my arm, my left side, my, my arm is still out of order. My left arm and my hand is still out of order. I want to know if you had any good ideas on, it, it's starting to come back now. I have feeling in the arm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm moving it slowly. 
and I want to know if there's any you know, thing that you could recommend mm -hmm. to get yeah. it moving a little quicker. Yeah, I'm going to turn to my panel, uh, Dr. Hediatna. Okay. Um, you know, it's uh, coming back. It's coming it's, back. It's, it's not yeah, there it, yet. I mean, the, the oh, yes, it's coming back. would be just physical therapy and rehabilitation. That's all you can do. It's, uh, yes. I, I would agree with that. The rehab, and you want to make sure that you're eating a good diet. Oh, I'm eating a very good diet. And very you're taking care salt. of your blood pressure now, of course. Oh, yes, very low sodium. My, my pressure is very under control. Hopefully fact, everything. It's a little bit on the low side. You know, Hopefully uh, everything will be bad. Yeah, you should be great. I was actually at a funeral today of a, of a woman who was in her late 60s, uh, my son-in-law's aunt, who had a okay. hemorrhagic bleed and didn't make it. So I, okay. we're grateful that you made it and that you have a chance to come back. And, and yes. this is going to instill good habits. I like to take something bad and make it good. If you can improve your and heart I'm, tone and improve your exercise, lose yes. weight. That, my that my doctor make, just did an EKG on me, an echo and the uh, stress test, and he said the heart is excellent. Mm -hmm. And this is something maybe would have, you know, if he had not gotten this, maybe you wouldn't have had the heart in such good shape. So keep working, right. keep plugging away, and really thanks for the kind words. Oh, no problem. Thank you. And, uh, by the way, I'm 43 now. 43. 43. Look at that. It happened when I was 39. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. The doctors can't even believe it. They said he's too young for this. But, you, he's but you're going to make it. You're going to call us back. You're going to get the strength back. Oh, I am coming back, yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Now, is this Herb? I see we have Herb again. Is that the Herb from the previous caller? Okay. Hello? Hello? Herb? Yes, how are you? Hi, did you call before? No. Oh, good. Time. Good. Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach. Oh, very nice. You know, I, I was just, um, you ever shop in any of the Russian stores in Brighton Beach? Uh, no, not really. I've just gone to the restaurants on the boardwalk, Tatiana's. I love Tatiana. Yeah, it's very good. You, you, they give you a fish in there. If you ask for a whole fish, you're going to love it. I know. I've had the herring. Oh, fantastic. I just got back from, I went to Russia last month, actually. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and there's some stores. You get the Bellinis, a taste of Russia, huh. I think. Uh, but anyway, what can we do for you? Okay, I have uh, Paget's disease of the hips, and uh, my doctor sent me for, well, I'm seeing a pain management doctor, and he sent me for an MRI, and it came back, and uh, it was, uh, came back at uh, avascular necrosis of both the sides of my hips, mm -hmm. right and left. And uh, I asked him to tell me what that was, and he said, you have to see a, a, an orthopedic doctor, and he'll discuss that with you. Yeah. And he recommended a doctor, but I know who that is, and I'm not very pleased with them. I was wondering if you could tell me what avascular necrosis is and maybe recommend a, an orthopedic doctor. Yeah, definitely. Case. We can help you out with that. Um, I, I think that I, I'm going to um, send it over. I'll just begin, but I'm, then I'm going to send it over to my brother, Dr. Garner, who amongst his specialties is a radiologist because he can describe what it looks like for you on the x-ray. In its simplest form, avascular necrosis, Herb, is where for some reason, whatever reason, part of the bone actually dies. It's just an area of the bone which didn't get enough oxygen. Normally, the bone gets oxygen through blood vessels, and for some reason, this part of the bone just died. Quite often we see it from injuries. You remember the baseball football player Bo Jackson had mm -hmm. his career cut short because of an injury he had which caused avascular necrosis to his hip. But um, I think a radiologist might even be better um, qualified I'm gonna to I'm gonna, Essentially we see a flattening. It should be nice and round, the hip, the, the bone, the femur, the head of the femur. And this gets flattened. It actually begins to die and gets, gets destroyed. Some people that drink a lot of alcohol get it. Are you a heavy drinker? No, no. I don't drink at all. Sickle smoke. cell patients can get this, sickle cell disease. There was a mm -hmm. disease in building the Brooklyn Bridge called Caisson's disease, where the, the divers would go down low and come up quickly and get these the bends, but they'd also get these bubbles and bubbling out of nitrogen, and anyway, it would cause a vascular necrosis as well. It's something that usually, I know, it's a lot of pain associated with it, and, and right. the treatment tends to be a hip replacement, uh, joint replacement. Dr. Hedy Actually, here? I had one avascular necrosis patient today in my office, a uh, young uh, 45, 45 years old uh, fireman uh, who came to me and uh, we did an x-ray and we you know they find the, and then we did an MRI which confirmed that uh, you know he was avascular necrosis. As uh, the Garner says, yes, that's a dead bone basically. There's no blood supply to the top of the femur and then you have the dead bone and you know you can pick it up in the x-ray or MRI. And uh, you know you can uh, take some pain medications, you know, get some injections, and basically, but the, at the end you need to end up, you know, having a total, uh, you know, hip replacement. Really? Could and, this be uh, from the Paget's disease? 
it could come from the Paget disease, as, but it's mostly you know, after the traumas or if you've been taking the high dose of a steroid for some reason. Do you have like emphysema or asthma or anything that no, you no, no. I exercise every day. Okay, that might be you know the way that you exercise. You no, know, uh, could had something to do with it. I'm not sure why you got the avascular necrosis. Many times we don't understand exactly why a patient has avascular necrosis. We guess that you know if you had a trauma, you were on a high dose of steroids, you no, know, or the job that you were you no know, had, or you no know, certain disease like sickle cell. But if you, you are a healthy man and you come with avascular necrosis. We usually say this was probably a trauma or some kind of uh, uh, no alteration in the blood supply to the femur. Um, now, what can you do about it? Uh, you need to find a very, very good orthopedic surgeon to do a total hip replacement for you. Uh, uh, the problem with doing a total hip replacement at young age like yours is that problem is they usually doesn't last, last too long. You know, after 15 or 20 years, when you become 60, 65, you may need to redo it. Um, therefore, are you able to walk now? Do you walk without assistance? Oh, yeah. I just I did uh, six kilometers today. I, I walk every day. Okay. I, I take the pain. You, and you don't take any pain medication for well, it? Well, he uh, put me on OxyContin, 40 milligrams. Okay. But I uh, reduced that to 10 milligrams once a day. Therefore, you are on OxyContin 10 milligrams once a day, and you are doing, and you have a job, you, you are working? No, I'm retired from the military. Retired from the military. Um, I, you can continue the pain medication for a certain of, amount of time, but, uh, I mean, should you know what? Get it sounds like it's coming to out? A, I or, mean, mm -hmm. you can call Dr. Hediani if you want to. Um, you can call my office and we'll give you a referral to an orthopedist, but if you want to try with the pain management and Dr. Hediani, uh, you've got the number, it's out there on the screen in front of uh, Dr. Hediani's face there, and you can see it, and you can give him a call tomorrow. But you don't want to get hooked on these pain meds, that's the other no, side. No, I'm afraid right. of that. So l let's continue this, we're going to continue, to be continued, okay? Okay. Okay, take care. We're going to go to Rose now, who's been waiting patiently. Hi, Rose. Hi. Uh, Rose, yes. where, are you, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Rockaway. Oh, also, a second caller from Rockaway. Uh-huh. Near, near Neponset or where? I'm at, uh, actually, it's Rockaway Beach. Oh, very good. Very, I know that area well. There's not much food out there. No, no restaurants out there. No, no restaurants. It's a desolate area. No, you know, you've got to get in the car. What can we do for you? <laughs> I just want to find out, like, I'm a very heavy uh, snore in the night. You're a snorer? Yes. It, my, my husband says it's so loud. Mm -hmm. So I just okay. want to find out why is that happening. I'm going to ask Dr. Katsina to try and we don't want any marital problems here, right? <laughs> no, no. No, no. Okay, what can we do? Uh, yeah. You know, first there is a, if you're, uh, can I just ask you if you can, uh, how much do you weight? If it's just about, you know, just in the range. Yes, I'm 170. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe a little overweight. But uh, the, um, the fact that you snore at night, there is a couple of, you know, a couple of problems with that. One is it's frequently seen in the overweight people, definitely. It can, uh, uh, it can be the sign that during the night your breathing becomes irregular and uh, during the night you may have an episode that you're not getting enough oxygen to the brain. So that is why on, uh, on the following morning you may not feel rested enough, you may feel sleepy, and you may want to have to take the uh, you know, naps during the day. It is also associated with a you know, high blood pressure or worsening of the heart function. So if you do have the symptoms like that, the first thing that you have to do, you have to see the sleep specialist. And what they do, they um, do the sleep study. So you usually spend the night in a sleep laboratory. You get connected to the special monitors that will detect the oxygen concentration in your blood and they will detect how you sleep. And it's very possible that you have the condition that is called obstructive sleep apnea, right? And it's uh, that why it has to be treated because of the uh, medical, you know, because of the problems, medical problems associated so with that. So the bottom line is snoring. The bottom line, yeah. again, snoring is not a normal thing. It's a sign that you have to seek more attention. And again, ask your doctor about the sleep lab, uh, about the sleep studies, and, you, uh, and if you can benefit from that. Okay, I hope, Rose, that helps. And give us a call back. Let us know what, how you made out. Right, doctor. Thank you. Okay, take care. We now, before we get to the next call, remember this quiz. It seems to have stumped people. Um, 
It's not Detroit, for the person who yelled out <laughs> Detroit. Um, it's a state that has never been above 100 degrees. And I don't want to give out any hints yet, but um, remember, we've, there's only 50 states. So just think about it. I'll give one hint. It's a tropical climate. Okay, next. We're going to go to Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. Hi, how are you? Okay. Okay, you, you have any, any inkling into the quiz? I uh, know, I don't. Why don't you throw a guess out? Name a state. Um, California. Not a good guess. No. <laughs> okay. What else can we do for you tonight? Uh, well, I have, I'm having a pain in my neck, and I, I don't know what it is. Okay, so pain in the neck. Yeah, and like, it's, it's just that it's very strong like at times, but yet it doesn't happen every day. Like, okay. I've been having it on and off. Because I'm gonna, and I'm just gonna set the stage here. We've got only a few minutes left, so we're gonna try and keep these under a minute. The answer. Start with Dr. Hediatni for neck pain. Uh, okay. Uh, well, neck, neck pain. Uh, how long have you been suffering from the neck pain? You say? Yes. How, how long have you been suffering with the pain? Oh, uh, just a couple. Neck, not maybe about two weeks. All right. I mean, two weeks neck pain, which doesn't radiate to the upper extremities. Doesn't radiate. It doesn't have any numbness, any tingling sensation. No. Doesn't no. have any weakness. It's mostly a myofascial pain. You get probably, I'm just say, saying that, you know, you probably have some muscle spasm, hot yeah. pack, cold pack, yeah. massage, uh, maybe uh, some Advil or Motrin if you don't have any stomach mm -hmm. problem, uh, Tylenol. That should alleviate your pain. If mm -hmm. it goes more than three weeks and it's not getting better, I certainly go to the doctor. I address that, uh, um, you know, may need to do an x ray or something like that. But, uh, if it's not radiating to upper extremity, you don't have weakness, you don't have numbness. No. Uh, just ho no, I just give a little hot pack massage and uh, some anti-inflammatory medication, and hopefully it will reduce. It's a good answer, Bruce. Okay. Ten Nothing seconds. To add. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. We're All now right. going to go to um, Penelope. Now I'll give you another hint. This place has some of the best beaches in the United States. Okay, let's go to Penelope. Hi, Penelope. Hi. Hi. It's a nice name. What is? It's, I, I like that name. Thank you. How did your parents choose that one? Do you know? I really don't know. No, it's a, good, it's a nice name. They did a good job. So do you have a guess for the quiz? Uh, yes, Dr. Hadiatnia. No, it's not Dr. Hadiatnia. <laughs> okay. But if you want to ask him a question, I've got him here. Dr. Yeah. You, you actually uh, named as one of the states. So. Yes. <laughs> what, I'm the 51. Okay. <laughs> what, what can we do for you? Okay. My father's having a total hip replacement, yes. and he's on a fentanyl pain patch. And he takes at least six tablets of Percocet a day. Does he need to stop his pain medicine? Oh, okay. He's, he's going through a surgery? He's going to surgery. Oh, okay. That, actually, that's a very good question. Uh, no, you should not stop your pain medication prior to going to a surgery. You inform your surgeon and you inform your anesthesiologist uh, that, you know, you're going uh, you know, at the day of the surgery or before that if you're going to a pre-anesthesia clinic and you inform them that you are on a fentanyl patch, you are on a narcotic patch, and you are taking the Percocet. Uh, you should not take the patch off prior to the surgery. That's a mistake that we see every day in the operating room. They come to the operating room with withdrawal symptoms. Their heart rate goes up, they are tachycardic, they are sweating, and you ask them what's going on, and they say, oh, I took my patch off. Um, your father should keep his patch on, he should continue his pain medication. He should inform the anesthesiologist and his surgeon that he's taking the pain medication. And uh, he will require more pain medication after surgery because he has some tolerance to the pain medication. But that's a Thank good question. Thank you, Penelope. Yeah. Appreciate the call. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Now we're getting closer to the end, so I'll give another quiz. It sounds like a greeting. If you just saw somebody, you might ask that person to inquire how that person's doing. It sounds like that. Larry's on line three. Hi, Larry. Hi, how are you, doctor? Is this the Larry from the computer on Rockland County? This is uh, Larry from the computer on Rockland County. Oh, good. We were concerned. We didn't hear from you last week. Well, we, I couldn't get through. So, do, you have, uh, do you have an answer to the quiz by any chance? Well, I, I would take a shot at it. I, I maybe guess at uh, North Carolina. Can you say it one more time? North Carolina. No, no, I'm sorry. No, no. Okay. No. okay. Um, but um, you're I'm, getting... I, it's, think of I, a... For the others out there, think of a beautiful beaches. Okay, next. Oh, yeah, um, what's the question? Uh, uh, is uh, for Dr. Garner, 
um, if uh, my, my wife my wife has um, uh, a, a spinal uh, problem with a, uh, a fractured vertebrae, and I want uh, short of um, first I wanted to find out if that whole spine can become arthritic, and does he have any suggestions for any kind of exercises that she might do to relieve her pain? And I assume they're from osteoporosis, the fractures. Um, the the it's osteoporotic, yeah. Okay. Well, the first thing is you have to treat the osteoporosis, and you have to treat it aggressively. That's one of the things we try and prevent, and certainly we haven't prevented it in this case, but we try and prevent it from occurring because once you've had a fracture in one part of the spine, your risk goes up proportionally to have fractures, unfortunately, in other parts of the spine. For osteoporosis, the best exercise to help prevent it is gravity, walking in gravity. People get osteoporosis, interestingly, of people in non-gravity settings like the astronauts. Um, your wife should be walking with weights if she can tolerate it. In terms of calcium, she should be taking between 1,200 and 1,800 milligrams of calcium a day and 400 to 800 international units a day of vitamin D. And we'll move it along quickly. Um, but I think that's the best thing, prevention of further fractures. Okay. I, I really appreciate that, Dr. Ghana. I hope she's feeling better. Right, and I heard, I, I heard it's your anniversary, so my congratulations Thank to you. Thank you. Take care. Uh, nice to talk okay. to you. Now we have, um, we have a quiz possibility, so we're going to see if Herb... Hello, Herb? Yes. Herb, do you have an answer to the quiz? Hawaii? You got it. You got it. Hawaii. It's pandemonium in the studio, Herb. The camera <laughs> people are going crazy. Uh, how did you think of it? Well, I was in Hawaii for three months when I got wounded in Vietnam, and it never went over 100 degrees while I was there. It's interesting. It never goes over. Most people think Alaska, as Dr. Hadiatna thought, right? It's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's a good question. So you've got to give the, your name and address. You're going to get that plaque. Do you have a place picked out for it? Uh, yeah. Where's it going? Right by my computer. Right by the computer. Okay. That's good. That's good. And I hope you can enjoy it, okay? Okay. Thank you. Take care, Herb. Okay. We've got a lot of herbs tonight. Yeah. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, where are you calling us from? Uh, Mill Basin. Oh, Mill Basin. What do you like to eat out there? What do we like to eat out here? Italian. Yeah, what's the place on the water? There's one at Nick's or something? Is there lobster? There's lobster? On the water? On the water, on Flabbergine. Oh, uh, the lobster. Yeah, what's the name of that lobster place on the water? Nick's Lobster Duck. Nick's, Nick's Lobster Duck. You right, like that? Right, right, right. by the plaza, King's Plaza. Yes, it's a nice place. Yes. Nice and awesome. Nice. So what can we do for you? Oh, okay. Am I on TV or? You're on TV. Oh, You hi. look very <laughs> good. You look very good. But you, can you cover up a little bit? It's a G show, you know? Uh, okay, okay, I have a question. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, about two years ago, I broke my femur, and I had a titanium rod put in, and my leg still bothers me, especially when I lay down at night, and my orthopedist says that um, the only thing that he would suggest is taking out the rod and maybe um, taking off some of the bone, but he says he can't guarantee that that would help the situation. But am I, do you suggest that I have that surgery? You know, it's, it's kind of a specialized answer, and I'd rather have an orthopedist. I don't know if, my, if the rheumatologist I, wants to talk about it. As a general rule, I always suggest a second opinion. I would oh, okay. see another orthopedist. Next week we have an hospital. orthopedist. Can you call us next week? Yeah, sure. We'll what like day? You gonna don't, wear a different outfit though, okay? We, we don't like the same <laughs> outfit. Right? Okay, thanks. It's on a seven second delay to laugh. I wear some right. negligee for you guys. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> we'll talk okay, to you next so what week. Day should I call? I want you to call at uh, call it about eight o'clock, and we're going to have the orthopedist address your question first. Okay, on on the same day on Tuesday. Tuesday night. At okay, 8 o'clock. great. Okay, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Same here. Thanks for your help. Take care. We, the last call of the night goes to Sophia. Sophia or Sophie? Sophia. Sophia is nice, nice. Are you from Italy? Uh, yes. Beautiful, beautiful name. Well, I hear a baby in the background? Yes, my yeah. daughter is here. What can we do for you? Uh, my mom has been having back pain for a couple of months now. Medication didn't work, so we took her to a spine doctor. And the spine doctor said she needs epidural steroid injection. I wanted to know more about the epidural steroid she injection. Has what? Uh, uh, she needs injections? Yes. So this, she has back pain. The doctor said oh. she needs injections. We only have a few seconds left. What oh, do you okay. Think? Therefore, uh, 
your, I'm, I'm sure that your mother has done an MRI, and probably the way I heard epidural steroid injection. Therefore, epidural steroid injection is an you know, injection we give into the spine to alleviate the, some of the inflammation in the back, basically, and uh, give some mostly temporary, sometimes permanent uh, pain relief, which is originating from the nerve impingement. Um, usually it's done by anesthesiologist pain management. Uh, it's done under fluoroscopy, under an x-ray, and uh, your father shouldn't be on any uh, anticoagulation, any blood thinners uh, when uh, he's having this. I need to make it very short. Uh, uh, my suggestion is that uh, take your father to your primary doctor, see exactly uh, what is the condition. Is it herniated disc disease? Is it the uh, arthritis is pinching the nerve? Uh, God forbid it's a tumor. No, you need to make sure that you've done an MRI prior to getting that injection. Um, and uh, I So Sophia, we hope that that helps you. Yes, and we did. Give us a follow-up, okay? Sure, I will. Okay. Um, we still have more callers, but I think that we've come to the end of the line. It's, I feel bad we have a few more to go. I know we have the, the people here to answer, but the next show is coming on at 9 o'clock. So what I want to say is that's it for this edition of Ask the Doctor. I want to thank Dr. Katsina, Dr. Garner, and Dr. Hediatnia for coming in. And we hope that we were able to help you. It's good to remember that you should be proactive about your own health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or third opinions. In the meantime, continue to watch every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock or visit the website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can catch video blogs, see past episodes, send in questions, or join in our new forum. Remember, I'm looking for you to join in that forum so we can discuss a variety of topics that we don't get to here. And also, you may have questions you couldn't get through. We'll try and talk about everything that we can. So I want to thank you for all your calls tonight. See you again next week with a brand new episode. We're going to be talking about family medicine, orthopedics for you, Sophia, and lung disease. So goodbye, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the tablet.